Welcome to the Daybreak Friday. My name is Michael Schimke. I'm the CEO of Scafree. We have this session here every Friday um, to allow you, the audience, to ask questions about data to know, um, but also the cloud computing, any data-driven applications um, that you can imagine, MPP stuff, that's all good. Um, if you have questions, you can send them essentially in via um, a form that I show you after today's session. You can also raise the question live. Um, uh, just uh, yeah, hit the um, uh, use the chat here in the client or use the Q&A function in the client or just raise your hand and I'll give you voice. Um, if we would receive multiple questions, I would cherry pick them, uh, them essentially. And if there would be no questions at all, and we're getting closer to this point, we would talk about the cluster here. Uh, my little hobby project in the in the old Shimko basement here. Um, but today we received a question. Um, let me just show it to you. Um, okay, one second. So this is about the load end date and how, and especially how to get rid of them. Because in data was 2.0.1, um, essentially, we don't use a load end date anymore, at least a, a physical end date anymore that we need to update essentially all the time, right? And we always talk about two different options, and they have essentially a, um, they, they are aware of the lead and lag option uh, with the window function. We talk about that one, but uh, that's not fast enough for them because that depends really on the um, uh, implementation of your window functions. If that's fast enough for your, for your purposes, then it's good. Otherwise, it's a problem, essentially. But there's two options, how we can get rid of the load end date. And let's talk about those. The first option is the one that we typically recommend. That's essentially to use the lead or lag function to calculate the load end date. And that's, a, that's essentially a, um, there should be a load yeah, okay. So this this functionality here, you would you would add a alias here essentially that would rename this to a load end date. So we essentially use the delete function to calculate the load end date based on the load date of the next delta, essentially. That's the idea. And this functionality here we implement in the view on top of your materialized satellite, on your satellite satellite in the raw data board, um, where you essentially store your data. The satellite, in the, the table satellite, the table structure of your satellite in a roll board looks exactly as in a book, but you get rid of the load end date. You just remove it. And then you put a view on top where you calculate the load end date like this one uh, virtually, essentially. And what I would do is we would also add all the attributes from the underlying table into the view. So the view structure looks exactly like the, um, the structure as in the book. The satellite with the, with the hash key, the load date, the load end date, and everything else. But the load end is just calculated. The problem is this approach works if your lead or lag function is fast enough. If this one is not performing, then you got a problem. And performing here means um, we typically use the load end date only in when loading the data model, the raw data vault. We don't use it for querying the system because when you query the, the raw data vault or the business vault for that matter, you use a pit table anyway sooner or later. And the pit table joins the database on the load date and the hash key only. So load end date is only required in the end for loading the raw data vault. So the question is, the lead and lag function, is it fast enough for your loading purposes? That's a real question. And if that's not the case, then we got a problem. Well, we used to have a problem for, for years ago, essentially, because this one, this one was the only option we had. Until somebody had the idea... And it's option number two, which we use when your lead or lag function is too slow or when you don't have a lead or lag function. In this case, um, you can use a pit table. Again, remember, we use the, uh, the load end date only for loading the data vault, not for querying it out. Well, and here now you have a pit table. And the idea is um, the first column here is the snapshot date. The snapshot date it's typically some days. Uh, at, in this case, at seven o'clock in the morning, that's when you create your when you deliver your information essentially. And then those two columns here and those two columns refer to a satellite delta. So there's two deltas, two satellites um, uh, in, in play here involved. And for every snapshot date, for every business key which you don't see here, for every hash key which you don't see here, you need to know which is the most current delta in every of those satellites. And that's what a pit table will tell you. Now. What we add is a end, end of all times snapshot date, like 888-1231. And this end of all times naturally points to the latest, latest delta in the satellite. This one here is the latest delta according to the snapshot date. 
But according to this snapshot date, the latest delta is the one which is the latest available, right? So um, it's really the latest one, right? Because um, your delta must be before 888, before end of all times. That's the idea. So this essentially is a reference to the latest delta in the satellite. There's no more recent delta essentially in the satellite essentially for this for this hash key. And the idea now is to in the delta check when you load the raw data vault. That's where the load entity comes into play. When you load the um, the the satellite, you want to know what is the latest delta I need to compare my staging data against. That's why we need a load end date. So, um, and if you don't have a load end date anymore, if you can't virtualize it, this one here gives you the option to get the the latest delta for every hash key from every satellite at very fast speed, even faster than a load end date uh, than, than the virtual function essentially and then the window function. So. We can use this partition here when loading the satellite because this one always gives us the most recent delta in the satellite that I need that I need to compare my staging data against. The problem is when you're done with loading the satellite, well, these references here are outdated. So what we have to do is we have to drop the partition here, this partition we have to drop, and then recreate it after loading this, the, the, the data from the source system into a raw data vault. That's when we typically drop the partition and reload it. So it always points to the latest delta in the satellite, essentially. That's the idea. So the drawback of the solution is, well, first of all, you need more storage because you need one more partition in the pit table where the snapshot date is end of all times. One more partition means more date, more, more storage consumption, right? The, um, the other drawback is you have to maintain it. So which means you have to drop the partition all the time and rebuild it when, when loading the, um, the sources, when you're done with that. So that's a drawback. The advantage is, because it's index based, it's even faster than the window function. That's a cool thing. And those two options exist for, for getting rid of the load entity essentially. Uh, there's a question here in uh, let me just read. In most row based database management systems, window functions such as lead or lag will be slow on bigger data sets. So, in case of using in a view, better physicalize it and refresh it only when absolutely needed. Yeah, you could. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't materialize the, the, um, uh, the view on top of the satellite, like the first option. I wouldn't, I wouldn't materialize this one here if you have a performance problem. First of all, the question, would, my question would be, is your performance problem regarding querying or regarding loading? If it's regarding querying, I would suggest you to use a pit table and then you don't need a load end date anymore. So in this case, even if you have this view, I wouldn't join it actually. I would not use it. I would only use the underlying table, the satellite table, join that against the pit table to produce a dimension or your facts. Because then you're not using this window function essentially, right? You don't need that. Because for uh, once you have the pit table, you join essentially based on those two columns, the hash key and the load date. That's how you join your deltas. There's no, there's no need for load end date typically in querying. That's number one. And then, the, so the performance problem can only be in uh, when loading the system. And when loading the system, when you have a performance problem with your lead or lag function, um, first, of, first of all, I would double check that uh, if the query uh, is, is correctly set up. That's, that's one thing. But if that's the case, then go for the pit table. That's the other. I mean, you can't beat it for those two scenarios here. The pit table will win because um, th that's based on the index. You just create the index on those columns on the um, snapshot date hash key combination. Yeah, hash key from the parent and snapshot date. That's your alternate key in the pit table anyway, or should be. And then you create indexes on the um, hash key and load date from the satellite. And you can't beat the performance. That's a point. But with the drawback of maintaining it, that's a drawback essentially, right? And that's why we try to avoid that solution if the window function is fast enough. That's a point. That's the that's a full comment. That's a full code. Yeah, good catch. It's the um that's I just showed you the lead function here, but you're right, the coalesce was missing, and I'm replacing null values when there is no more recent delta than the one I'm looking at at the moment. I'm replacing the null value by the end of all times, essentially, for the open load end date. And um, what you should also recognize is I'm creating a gap, right? So I'm uh, deducting a um, microsecond, essentially, or whatever. Second should be a microsecond. I'm deducting this one in order to um, have a gap between the load dates so I can use a between function. You don't have to do that. Sorry, you'd have to do that. You could get rid of the minus here 
but then um, you can't use a bit between functions. Actually, that's the uh, start practice in, in data world, right? So, okay, yeah, good catch. Solve for that. Okay, so this is the the window function that you want to use. If you question like this, I'm again, I'm running short, so I'll shoot your questions. Uh, use this form here at sfr.ee slash dv Friday. That's where you can submit your questions. You can upload some pictures if you want, maybe some small model, keep it small so it fits on HD, all right? And, um, or, or some whiteboard pictures or whatever. We also have two other webinars, one on Westscape, one on dbt. Um, that's what you find on scape.to slash webinars. And other than that, um, join the data world community, the DVIC community. Um, uh, yeah, it's free, forum-based, where you can also ask questions if you can't wait for the next Friday, essentially, and um, where our guys are also active and, and answering uh, questions, essentially. And where we also have a monthly call um, where we also discuss some interesting questions, essentially, in a live stream. All right. Thanks for joining. Um, yeah, I forgot to say Happy New Year, right, um, guys? Um, yeah. Enjoy your weekend and see you hopefully next Friday. Next Friday will be a better session. Sorry for that. And um, yeah, it's not, not too bad mistake. <laughs> okay, live session, guys. Thank you, guys. See you. Thanks for joining today. If you'd like to discuss this further, give us a call on the number below here and we're happy to discuss this with you. See you next time. Have a nice weekend. Bye-bye.